All right, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, and of course, fellow fish and accomplices, good morning and welcome back to fishing. So as you can probably guess by it being dark out, it is very early in the morning. It's not even five o'clock and we are headed down to the South Shore in search of fluke. I haven't been down to this neck of the woods in a little while. Last time I was in this area, it was very good. Uh, though things have been heating up weather-wise, so I'm hoping it hasn't heated up too much. I know there'll be fish around, but I don't expect it to be like it has been. But if it is, I'll, it'll be awesome. Um, we're going to do what we've been doing, mainly jig and gulp, light jig heads, etc. You know the drill. Um, but if this doesn't work, we could always switch to porgies, and we have other options as well, which we will call it like we see it. So I'll cut the, or keep the talk to a minimum. I'll catch in the water soon, because you know what we're about to do. Get some fishing accomplished. All right, making it into the water. Crack of dawn, just after six. Uh, we got a little more wind than I thought we'd have, but that's never a surprise here. Um, I don't need to go super far if I want to catch flukes, so that's a good thing. Uh, but we're gonna hit the the usual spots. Water. I'm getting about 76 degrees, but I'm in shallow. Uh, we got outgoing tide. It's still fairly high, so it's a good tide to fish around here. Uh, we're going to start things off with three 8 ounce jig heads and s, &S. and I think we're going to go with a paddle shad to start. Um, keep things light, that's what I found has been the best way to get the bite, and hopefully this fishing will be going just right. So stay tuned, because we'll be out in the spot soon. Alright, decided we're going to start off with the jerk shad. We have good tides, and that looks really nice in that jig head, so... This has done me pretty well during outgoing in this particular spot. Let's see if we can replicate that today. Okay, first spot, first drop. Let's see what we can do. All right, we got a wind versus tide situation. Wind is pushing us in that direction, tide is going that direction. So we're gonna pedal against the wind so we stay with the tide. Always move with the tide when you're fluke fishing. Might be more work, but already already on yo <laughs> what's that see robin gonna be a lot of these guys today i'm sure they are moving in in heavy numbers back down yeah so when i got that sea robin i commented that i'd probably be seeing a lot of them in this session and that is an understatement these sea robins were everywhere and we're talking all shapes and sizes of sea robins micros average large they were everywhere and extremely aggressive so while there's certainly flukes still around uh, the sea robins are making it that much more challenging to catch them uh, the water temps are only heating up. Um, I got in, it was 76. As this day went on, it was up to like 77, even 78 with that outgoing tide. So uh, the, warm, the warming of the water is definitely changing the bite. And some of these fish were very finicky with the way they fought, uh, bit rather. Um, there were porgies around too. And sometimes I'd even get some of the fluke bites mixed up with porgies just because of how aggressive and finicky they were acting. Tried the bottom of the drop. We're gonna try the ledge this time. I feel like there's gonna be more fish hanging out here. Definitely marking some stuff. Hopefully it's not just sea robins and porgies. Already getting bit. That's a fluke. Easy come, easy go. That guy had some big buddies. All right, it's paddle shad time. We're not messing around. This one's a little beat up, but should do the trick. All right, let's see how the paddle shad does. Different point of interest. Nice little drop off here. In fact, more like a series of drop offs in this particular spot. Thank you. 
Yeah. When the mor when the porgies move in fall, that's the kind of stuff I gravitate towards. Because they'll hit even like a small piece of that, but I find the fluke really like something a bit more substantial. I mean, they will, but I think porgies and stuff will go after that more. That's more their, what they gravitate towards. Ah, that might have been a good fluke. It's a very finicky bite today. That's a fluke. That's definitely a fluke. It's not big, but it's a good sign. Well, I'm true. Hopefully, hopefully this will be a future video. When we get on the cameras, when we get off the camera. <laughs> Shot. Let's give this spot one more try. It's just a lot to see, Robbins. Put a fresh piece of gulp on. This one should move through the water a little nicer. Let's see if it makes a difference. Yo! That's a better one. That feels like a keeper. Not huge, but nice. Yep. That is how we're starting. That's a nice fish. Got to start somewhere, right? Knew we kept hitting that drift for a reason. That is a very easy keeper, so we're just going to string them right up and get them measured. That's the kind of hook set you like to see, folks. about 21 21 on the dot it's the size we like to keep all right 21 inch in the boat we're gonna go right over that drift again all right not gonna leave them in the water too long the water is starting to warm up and we don't want to attract on un any unwanted guests if you know what i mean so once he loses his color we'll throw him over ice once he's fully bled out Now I got another one. No, I don't, it's probably a sea robin. Yep. That's a fluke, I think. Yeah, that's a fluke. It's a good one. Might be like the last one, bro. Literally dropped it right on his head. Yo! -ho. Not as big, but it's a keeper. You want some fish? You want to take something home, though? All right. So how about this? Uh, yeah. 
Because I want to make sure you get something from coming all this way, you know? This one's a little smaller, but he's definitely a keeper. This one's 19... About 19 on the dot. All right, this one, be, this one has your name on it, Mike. All right, we got two keepers now. A 19-incher and a 21-incher. We're likely going to give that 19-incher to Mike. Um, but if he limits out, obviously, I'll keep it. But in the meantime, it is time for our seltzer review. And yes, it is true. True power, that is. The workout blend. Watermelon flavored. Never had this before. Again, kind of like the last couple. I'm not even sure if this is technically seltzer. It's clear, so I guess maybe it's a seltzer. I don't know if there's like a, a rule of what can be called seltzer or if this is something else, but uh, nutritional facts. It's only 10 calories. Okay, that's definitely watermelon. It's not bad. It's a little fake tasting, but I, I can get by with this. So uh, yeah, I give this a, a 7.5. Definitely has more ingredients than your typical seltzer, but it looks like they're fairly, well, some of them look pretty fake. Uh, but I guess uh, it's a workout blend and it is a workout when you're in this kind of heat and rule number one, stay hydrated. So this is gonna help me get there. And hopefully watching this video will help you get to entertainment. So thank you for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe while you're here. All right, new spot. Fish the drop off, getting some deep water, deep relatively speaking from about 17 down to 30 feet of water. Yeah, we just barely missed it. I don't know if anything's on it, but it's a nice piece of structure. If you have your fish finder on, you'll see it. It's a big hump or rock or something. Here we go. Fluke. Definitely a fluke. Damn, son. Right on that hump. So we gave Mike one of our keepers. So this one's a little bigger than the one I gave him. I think it's like a 20 incher. Let's see. Yo, if I hold on to this one, you want it if we have a double limit? Yeah. All right, 19 and a half. All right, 19 and a half inch fluke. He just threw up a crab, it's good to know. Hold on to that, because we might actually use some of them in a little bit. Uh, yeah, let's go over that spot again. Yep. Huh. I didn't think that'd be a fluke. He wasn't that big. Oh, whoa. I, I don't know if that's a fluke. Feels like a big sea robin or something. Like foul hooked. It's fighting really weird. No, it's definitely not a fluke. Spell hook, see Robin. Ray, uh, skate. These are the worst. Yeah, he doesn't have a stinger. Just a skate. Ooh. 
That's ah oh, damn. I don't know if that was a fluke. It wasn't a sea robin. I know that. Came back. That's a fluke. It's not huge, but it's a fluke. Little washcloth. Looks like they're all on the ledge. So we were getting no shortage of bites. Uh, the main issue, though, was a lot of these bites or fish were sea robins or potentially porgies and just things that weren't fluke. And even when I would get fluke hits, they weren't biting like typical fluke. They were playing with it a lot, doing short hits and then dropping it. Um, and because of that, I got a little quick to set the hook on some of these fish because they legitimately did not feel like fluke. And that became most apparent in this next clip you're about to see where I got a hit that felt nothing like a fluke, but it actually turned out to be a pretty decent fish and I paid for it. What do we have here? I don't know. That's, it's not a sea robin. What is this? Is it a fluke? Oh, I think it's a keeper. It's actually a keeper size fluke. Well, just lost a fluke that was pretty close to keeper size. Didn't think it was going to be a fluke. It didn't hit like a fluke and didn't fight like a fluke, but lo and behold. So the morning of fishing was essentially an outgoing bite. And as time went on, not too long after that last fish, uh, the tide really started to slow down. And rather than just, you know, sit around and wait and twiddle our, twiddle our thumbs until uh, the incoming tide moved in, I decided to mix things up and see if we can target some porgies or maybe even some trigger fish if they were around in some structure. Um, and while we did get some limited results, it just wasn't that great. Uh, I guess they really haven't moved in too, too much in numbers in this particular area. I mean, there were fish around, just not as hot a bite as I was hoping for. Uh, I think in another week or two it will really pick up, same thing like last year. Uh, but I got, you know, a few nice fish, porgies, etc. And after that kind of dwindled out, we came back to the initial area for incoming tide and tried to finish strong. All right. We've been screwing around in the structure trying to get fish for the last hour and a half or so during slack tide. We are moving incoming and we are flying, going five and a half to six knots with the tide in our back. Going back to where we were before and see if we can finish strong and get a, a big one or two before we go. All right, that's going to do it. Uh, tough day of fishing. I mean, it had its ups, obviously. When it was on, it was really on. It was that outgoing tide. And I think the incoming tide could have even been pretty good too, but I had to basically wrap it up. I got to get out of here. Uh, but yeah, water temp is really warming up. It's almost, you know, it was approaching 78 degrees some of the, during some moments of uh, the fishing. So we're really into full summer mode. Uh, so my guess is that the porgies are going to be rushing in any moment now, and it's going to be really tough to get fluke. But they're still around, and I'm sure there's some real nice ones too. So get them while you still can, I suppose. Uh, you know how I do. Light jig head, no teaser, no bucktail uh, when I'm fishing these kind of waters. But yeah, hope you enjoyed. Hoping to get out at least one or two more solid fluke sessions before it gets really tough. But uh, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Of course, goodbye for fishing.